God bless you, brothers and sisters. I wanted to take a moment and do a small segment on intercession. Uh, Minister Bradley, who oversees our intercessory ministry, uh, reached out to those who pray on Sunday morning to ask would they be a part of a group called intercession. And his feedback was that many uh, were making statements such as uh, pa uh, 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 Minister Bradley, I only volunteer if you ask me to, uh, but I'm not an intercessor or or I don't want to be a part of the group. I don't really know about intercession. I pray, but I don't I don't know if I'm an intercessor. And so it is my duty as a chief teacher in our church to take a moment and I won't take much of your time. I just wanted to take a moment to explain to you what an intercessor is. And from there, I'm going to leave the door open to anyone in our church who feels after I explain what intercessor is, who feels you have a calling uh, to be an intercessor for our church. Let us pray. Father, we love you and thank you for the gathering that you have placed into the body, the Bible says, according to how you have saw fit and everything that the church needs to survive, you've equipped it. And for that, we praise you. And Lord, like you uh, give people a heart for ushering, you give people a heart who sing melodious songs. You give people a heart um, to serve in so many capacities. It's the same way you sin in a prophetic ministry, those who have a heart to intercede. And I pray that you will word my mouth and wisdom uh, to share these few things with those that may have a heart who will come forth as we continue to fight against the kingdom of Satan, who has a heart to intercede for your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. An intercessor comes from the Old Testament word paga, P-A-G-A. It's a word of intercession, uh, and it literally means one who intervenes on behalf of somebody else. It's if you saw someone in a fight, and it seemed like the bully was going to take full advantage of. Are you the kind of person that has the nature that you would stand up for them? But that's how I knew years ago uh, that God uh, was using me heavily in intercession is because what he did in the spiritual, he had already reflected in the physical. And that's what the scripture says. It says first the natural, then uh, then the spiritual. And what had happened to me so that you will know I saw a lady being attacked in a parking lot by a gentleman that she was dating and uh, he was very aggressive with her. Something rose up in me. I got out of my truck and uh, I had something in my hand. I won't tell you what I had, but I went over and asked, was, was there an issue? Was there a problem? I felt a burden to put myself in harm's way for her protection. And that's what an intercessor is, is someone who stands up on behalf of someone else. And I want to explain that concept to you. If you can remember a gentleman by the name of Abraham, he's recorded in Genesis chapter 12 and his nephew Lot had got in trouble down in Sodom and Gomorrah. He goes to God as an intercessor. He says, God, now listen, I know you want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but my nephew's there and I am willing to negotiate with you to get you to change your mind on behalf of my nephew. Can you see it? Can you see Abraham trying to step in between God's wrath and his nephew? But the Bible says he tried to find 50 righteous men and he couldn't find and he negotiated with God, got down to 10 and guess what? He couldn't find any to spare Sodom and Gomorrah. Is somebody standing on the side of Rome, which Lot and his wife were there in Sodom and pleading before God to give mercy, pleading before God and that's what an intercessor is. In a moment, I'm going to explain that intercession is different from praying. But intercession is the ability to stand on behalf of someone who needs help. And the Bible talks about uh, so many cases of intercession. and We're going to look at it in a minute. But the characteristics, I'm going to talk about the characteristics of an intercessor. And I'll talk about the heart of an intercessor and I'll be out of your way. The characteristics of an intercessor is someone who don't mind begging God, request, plead, right? Making war, all right, as the lions are, 
going through the herd. The herd is running from a pack of 20 lions. The stronger herd, what they do is they see the little herds. They gather around those little herds that are weak. They can't outrun those lions. And they stand and face those lions to protect those weak herd so that no wrong will happen unto them. That's what an intercessor is. It's in the things of God. When somebody's hurting, you know, you're a person that would just haul off and go to crying, you know, to know that something happened to someone. It really bothers you. They stay on your mind. And like I said, this is a gift. Uh, if you don't feel that way, I, you know, it's obviously I'm not talking with you, but I am talking to those who carry a burden for souls. It bothers you. Someone's unsafe. It bothers you that someone is sick. You awaken in the morning to pray. Well, that's what an intercessor is. An intercessor is a person that wants to see the weak win. Praise God and ask for God's supernatural power, grace and mercy to come and intervene in their situation. Now, as I talk about the characteristics, let me take a moment and tell you there is a difference between an intercessor and somebody who just prays. Now, as you know, the Bible says in St. Luke 18 that men ought to always pray. That word men is humanity suggesting if you're breathing, you ought to pray. The Bible says the publican and the Pharisee came in the temple at the same time. The saved and the unsaved were encouraged in that day to come to the altar to pray. And one righteous Pharisee thought he had his self-righteousness came to the altar suggesting uh, that he paid tithes of everything he owned and that he prays twice in a week. And he fasts. And then there was a sinner that came in and prayed and said, Lord, I don't even deserve to stand in your presence. Everybody prayed in that day. But just because you pray don't mean you're an intercessor. And that's what I want to clear up with you. Just because you pray don't mean you're an intercessor. But there are some that have the gift of intercession because the difference between somebody who prays versus someone who intercedes is that intercessors have a lifestyle of intercession. They're just not this way at church. They just don't offer a prayer if somebody asks them. They live a life of interceding. They live a life of being there for people when they are weak. They stand up to bullies, all right, in any situation. And we know like Moses was an intercessor when he stands up that day and sees the Hebrew that is working, being beaten, mistreated. Moses stands and buries the bully in the dirt and kills him and takes his life. He did not know in his natural bullying that he had a spiritual calling of intercession. And I want to take a moment to tell you that if you're listening to this and you're saying, I'm not on the, I'm not on the altar ministry. Okay, Pastor Mike, I don't make it to prayer uh, events. I don't make it to prayer times with the church, but I do have a great aggression to protect those that are weak. It could be that you have not explored that gift in the same way you develop your ability to fight and cuss and get mad. The same way in the spiritual things you have to develop the gifts of God. It could be you have the gift, but it's potential untapped. And I want to challenge you to submit yourself to this intercessory group. There will be teachings and certain things to help you to formulate and to really gain an advantage in being an intercessor. Our church needs it. There's demonic powers and certain things that come. There are people who come to the altar. They have spirits. They're overcome by things. And we need a team of intercessors. You thought service was over, that problems are over? No. We need a team we can trust as intercessors who would take those prayer cards and take those issues they just learned of on the altar and pray to God about it. And they're excited about it. It's not a burden. It's just something that you enjoy doing. God gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Some of you gave him a different depth of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit speaks to you through unintelligent tongues in Romans 8, read 26. And the Spirit giveth us an interpretation. It giveth us of the ability and maketh moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered or explained. The Spirit prays through us. And that's all God needs to do uh, to be able to use intercessor. Intercessors are, listen to the characteristics, they risk and make sacrifice. 
Let me give you a few biblical examples that will help you. In Exodus 32 and 32, Moses was willing to be blotted out of God's book if he would preserve the people. You see that? He offered himself to save others. Abraham, as I told you, was willing to negotiate in Genesis 18 and 22. David disobeyed by taking a census. He was never supposed to count the children of God, but he made a mistake and he did it. And God gave him, he said, gave him three options. And he said he was going to destroy. But what David did in First Chronicles 21 and 17, he offered himself. He said, Lord, don't hurt the people, hurt me. Intercessor. And Jesus in Isaiah 53 and 12, the Bible says he had become sin, laid down his life that you and I may be forgiven. And the Bible says he's seated right now in the New Testament on the right hand of God. Watch what it says, making intercession for us. That's what it is to risk and have sacrifice. It's to boldly defend. It's to volunteer to stand on behalf of someone else. Those are the characteristics of an intercession. And if you have that, we want you, we need you to stand up and own your calling and get it to a place it can be developed among seniority of intercessors who've been praying for, for years. And if God has given you a burden for prayer, we want you to exercise those characteristics and become a part of our intercessory group in the church. The second thing that I'll tell you, not only the characteristics of the intercessor, but the heart of the intercessor. The heart of the intercessor just has a few things and I'm almost done. Number one, you're a person of mercy. If you're watching a show and you saw that some man or woman killed someone and whether or not they deserve a second chance and you like they just, they still deserve a check and stance. You don't know what them people went through. And somebody beside you is arguing with you saying they kill somebody. They need the death chamber. Somebody need to take them back and take their life, electrocute them. And you're saying, I don't think nobody deserved that. That's a quality mercy. Everybody don't have mercy. But if you have mercy where you think people ought to have a second chance, you may have the gift of intercession. Not only that, do they have mercy, but they have humility and service. In each of these cases, from Abraham to Moses to Jesus to Daniel to so many, it was really humility to serve as an intercessor, to do something for God, to preserve something. That's what an intercessor is. And I won't go off into intercessory should really flood our entire church in all areas, whether it's from finance, whether it's the parking lot, is someone who's standing together. Really, the whole church ought to be intercessors. I don't even have time to talk to you about that. That's why when Jesus went into the temple and they were in there doing their own thing and making profit of their own lives, he tore the temple up. He, he took his stick and whipped out the doves and all kinds of things and said, this shall be called a house of prayer. Well, who hangs out in houses of prayer? I think you get it. He says, you should not be in here of the house of God for profit. You should be in here because you are a person of prayer. And intercession is so critical that you ought to all saints ought to have a heart of intercession. It's mercy. It's humility and service. And then not only is it humility and service, but lastly, intercessory. It's like watering a plant. And no matter how well the plant is, and I'm talking about the church, church without water, church without prayer, church without intercession. Are you listening? Can be a dry church. Can be a church that sees no sign, miracles and wonders. And that's why we're calling to the front line our intercessors. We want to go to a deeper depth of how to help people get free from strongholds, free from bondage, free from condemnation, free from things that have them ride up, tied up, tangled up and, and have the God kind of faith to believe that through God's supernatural intervention, through the purpose of prayer, things can change. 
I close with the last thing, and that is Jesus was walking with the disciples. And they were trying, they were trying prophetic ministry. They were trying to deliver a boy from a demon. They could not do it. Jesus comes off of Mount Transfiguration, and when he gets to the bottom of the mountain, he lays hands on the boy, causes the family to relieve and rejoice. And while he's walking away with the disciples, they ask him, and they say, Lord, why could we not do such? He said, these kind only come out by prayer and fasting. He was simply saying this, you're practicing ministry, but you don't have the lifestyle of a minister. You're practicing praying, but you don't have the lifestyle of an intercessor. And if you would buy in fully into the gift of intercessory, then that power that is unlocked in the supernatural will be available to you. Well, that's what we're doing. We're looking for intercessors. We need intercessors to just flood and take over this church, especially on our altar call ministry. And I want you to know if you're interested, contact Lady Samantha Brown. She's getting ready to have on the uh, December the 6th, I believe that is right, uh, at 7 o'clock, uh, 6 o'clock, December the 6th at 7 o'clock. That's a Tuesday. If not, it's posted there on the screen. Uh, she's going to have a meeting with all the altar workers as we prepare for the 2023 campaign. There's some new members that have a heart uh, of intercessory and wants to stand in the gap on the altar to help wage war against the enemy. If that's you, we want you to be on that Zoom call meeting. There's more information of that to come. God bless you and I pray this enrich your life. It will help you along the way.